today I want to talk about uh, false prophets because uh, we understand that a false prophet is a person who spreads false teachings or messages while claiming to speak the word of God. In the Bible, false prophets also spoke on behalf of false gods and false prophets functioned in their prophetic role illegitimately or for the purpose of deception. And um, the Bible denounces false prophets for leading people astray. And in the Old Testament, the actual term false prophet does not occur, but references to false prophets are evident and abundant. In the book of Jeremiah, we encounter a clear description of false prophets. All right. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 14 says, uh, it says this, Then the Lord said to me, the prophets are prophesying lies in my name. I have not sent them or appointed them or spoken to them. They are prophesying to you false visions, divinations, idolatries, and the delusions of their own minds. And also when we look at uh, the book of Zechariah chapter 10 verse 2, it says, For the idols have spoken vanity, and the diviners or the diviners have seen a lie, and have told false dreams, they comfort in vain. Therefore, they went their way as a flock. They were troubled because there was no shepherd. The primary difference between men like Jeremiah, a true prophet of God and false prophets, was their source of information. Rather than speak the word of the Lord, false prophets delivered messages that originated in their own hearts and minds. And the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 23 verse 16, This is what the Lord Almighty says, Do not listen to what the prophets are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. You can also go and see uh, chapter 14 verse 14, which I just told you, and, and uh, dig deeper on that. And also chapter 23, verse 25 to 32 of the book of Jeremiah. But I'm going to read to you Ezekiel 13. Uh, Ezekiel 13 uh, from verse 1. And I can read all the way to uh, verse 7. All right? So that you can be able to understand something here. The Bible says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy again as the prophets of Israel that prophesy and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts hear ye the word of the lord thus says the lord god woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and i have seen nothing O israel thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert yet have not gone up into the gaps neither made up a hedge for the house of israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying the Lord saith, and the Lord has not sent them. They have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Have you not seen a vain vision? And have you not spoken a lying divination? Whereas you say, the Lord said it, albeit I have not spoken. Now, when you look at this, the Bible is so keen and God distances himself from all false prophets. He says, I did not send these prophets, yet they have run with their message. I did not speak to them, yet they have prophesied. Jeremiah 23, 21. Another difference between true prophets and false prophets in the Bible is motivation. True prophets are motivated by loyalty to God above all else, where else false prophets are motivated by self-interest and a desire to be popular among people. Think about the book of uh, 1 Kings chapter 22 verse 13 to 14. It says, And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold now the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. But I want you to see 
what Micaiah said in verse 14. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord says unto me, that will I speak. That only will I speak. Are you going to be like him? Now, while Jeremiah foretold the grim of truth of coming desolation upon Jerusalem in uh, Jeremiah chapter 4, the false prophets promised peace. They promised peace. Look at Jeremiah 6 verse 14. They have healed also the heart of the daughter of my people slightly saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. This is exactly what happens even in days today. People are trying to prophesy good, glad tidings when there are no glad tidings. They are trying to prophesy peace when there is no peace. And also Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 11 says, For they have healed the heart of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Naturally, the people of Judah preferred the pleasant messages of the false prophets, saying in Isaiah 30 verse 10, Don't tell us what is right. Tell us nice things. Tell us lies. Is this not a picture of what is happening today? People just want to be told lies. They don't want the truth. When they are told to repent so that they can be in good standing with God and not go to hell, they say, no, just tell us that we are good people. Just tell us that you have done right and we are going to heaven no matter what we do. Often, false prophets were hired for payment or spoke their messages for financial gain. When we look at the book of Micah, uh, chapter 3, verse 11, it says, her leaders judge for a bribe. You see, they were paid to judge. Her leaders judge for a bribe. Her priests teach for a price. Mm -hmm. Her prophets tell fortunes for money, yet they look for the Lord's support and say, Is not the Lord among us? No disaster will come upon us. You see the point? And also when we look at Jeremiah, uh, Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah, chapter 6, verse 12 to 13, it says, And lo, I perceived that God had not sent him, but that he pronounced this for prophecy against me, for Tobiah and San Sanballat had hired him. <laughs> Therefore he was hired that I should be afraid and do so and sin, and that they might have matter for an evil report. Are you seeing this one? Are you seeing this point, my friends? This is exactly what is happening in our society today. People are prophesying what they want for money, for filthy lucre, false prophets. The book of Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 13 to 14, it says, For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness, and from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. They have healed also the heart of the daughter of my people, slightly saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Ezekiel 13, verse 19. And I will, and will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die and to save the souls alive that should not live? By your lying to my people, that hear your lies. See what God is saying. You're trying to make people live who are supposed to die and people die who are supposed to live by prophesying to them lies, false prophets. Let's also see the book of Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1. It says, But there were pro false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. This is talking about in the last days. These are the last days that we are living. There will also be false teachers among us who privily shall bring in damnable, uh, damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And verse uh, 2, verse 2 says, Let me show you this. 
sorry I just gone to a different place um uh, verse 2 and to read 2 to 3 it says and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of and uh, through covetousness shall they with framed words make merchandise make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not so they will make a business out of you they prophesy to you lies and you pay them is this not happening in today's churches are you not seeing these things happening people are charging for prophecies People want to get some money for what they are giving, for the lies that they are giving. Is this not what you're seeing right now, friends? Have you not seen this one? And Israel, we understand, could not always discern the difference between a true and false prophet. In the book of 1 Kings, uh, from chapter 22, King Jehoshaphat of Judah sought counsel from the Lord before he and King Ahab of Israel embarked on their mission to retake the city of Ramoth in Gilead and Jehoshaphat had the predictions of victory from Ahab's 400 counselors but suspected that these men were false prophets who did not have the mind of the Lord. Jehoshaphat's suspicions were correct. They were Ahab's yes men. False prophets who had no concern for relating the true word of God they merely said what the king wanted to hear and collected their salary from the royalty or from the royal treasure. Jehoshaphat asked if there was another prophet who could give a second opinion. Ahab called for the prophet Micaiah, albeit reluctantly. I hate him, Ahab complained, because he never prophesies anything good about me, but always bad. First Kings 22 verse 8 and of course, true to form, Micaiah prophesied that Ahab would be killed in the battle and Israel would be scattered on the hills like sheep without a shepherd. In verse 17, Micaiah, whose words came to pass, proved to be the true prophet of God. None of the false prophets in Ahab's court could keep the king alive. The punishment specified for false prophets in the Old Testament was severe. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verse 20 says, If any prophet dares to speak a message in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or to speak in the name of other gods, that prophet must be put to death. In the New Testament, Jesus taught about false prophets in his sermon on the mount. He said in the book of uh, Matthew, chapter 7, verse 15 to 18, he said, Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. By their fruits you will recognize them. Do not pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles. Is it possible for you to pick them from there? Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or you pick figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit but a bad tree bears bad fruit a good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit and jesus went on to explain the grave consequences of being a false prophet he said in the book of matthew chapter 7 verse 19 to 23 he said every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire Therefore, by the, their fruit, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. The Bible likewise describes false prophets as adulterous people. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 14, it says, I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. 
they commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers that none does return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Also, false prophets, they are also described as uh, treachers or people who trick, I think, that's treacherous, all right? (laughs) That's the word. It says in the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 4, her prophets are light and treacherous persons. Her priests have, have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. They are also described as drunkards. In the book of Isaiah 28, verse 7, it says, But they also have erred through wine and through strong drink are out of the way. The priests and the prophets have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. These people are drunkards. They are also wicked. The Bible says in Jeremiah 23 verse 11, For both prophet and priest are profane. Yeah, in my house I have found their wickedness, says the Lord. They are also liars. Jeremiah 14 verse 14, Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I send them not, neither have I commanded them, neither speak unto them. They prophesy unto you false vision and divination, a thing of naught, and the deceit of their hearts. They are liars. And of course, they are also associated with divination and witchcraft, like we've just read in Jeremiah 14, verse 14. They are diviners and witches. And of course, we can also read about the same on, on Ezekiel uh, in Ezekiel 20, 22 verse 28 it says and our prophets have doubled them with untampered mortar seeing vanity and divining lies unto them saying thus says the Lord when the Lord has not spoken and also the book of Acts chapter 13 verse 6 it gives us a picture of someone who was like those false prophets who was called but Jesus the Bible says in Acts 13 verse 6, And when they had gone through the isle unto uh, Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet. You see? A false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus. And you know the story. So now, Scripture teaches believers to be diligent in faith and devotion to Christ's teaching so that they will be able to spot false prophets and false teachers quickly. In the book of 2 Peter, 1 verse 10 tells us, Therefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. And also, the book of uh, uh, 2 Peter 1 verse 19, uh, we can read downwards a little bit. It says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, wherein you do well that you take heed as unto light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Have you seen people trying to say, oh, you cannot know this without me? Have you seen false prophets trying to tell people, you can't know this one unless I explain it to you? The Bible says no part of the scripture is of any private interpretation. When they tell you that, they are liars. They are a bunch of liars. And also in the book of 1 John, chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Beloved, believe not, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they have God, because many false prophets are gone out in the world. But have you realized something, friends? That uh, most of these false prophets, they tell you, don't touch the anointed. Don't try us. Don't question us. We are above the Bible. What we say is more than even what God has written in the Bible. It's like they're telling you, no, God can contradict the Bible and just let us say things which are not even in the Bible. Those are false prophets. They don't want to be tried. They don't want to be questioned. 
thankfully. The Bible outlines foolproof tests for recognizing a false prophet. And the key is to know what a true prophet is like. Now let me give you a couple of ways to know a true prophet. Okay? A true prophet's words, his words will be fulfilled. Okay? What he says will be fulfilled. When you see somebody who said something and it was not fulfilled, then that's a false prophet. Let me show you. The Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 18, uh, chapter 18, verse 21, okay? I want to show you what the Bible says about a true prophet. It says, And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? Verse 22 says, When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. But the prophet has spoken it presumably. You shall not be afraid of him. Mm, you see the point here? Don't be afraid of these people. When they speak something and doesn't come to be, then uh, it means God did not speak that. And also the book of Jeremiah says, The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. Right? Now I want you to see verse 9, what it, uh, Jeremiah said. The prophet which prophesies of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord has truly sent him. Make some sense? Make some sense, that one? All right. Now, let me also tell you something else, how to know a true prophet. A true prophet's teachings are consistent with the scripture. I'm sure you've seen people who are prophesying things which are against the scripture, which are going contrary to the scripture. God cannot contradict his word. He cannot give somebody another word and then he gives another and then the scripture is saying something different. It doesn't work like that. In the book of uh, 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 20 to 21, it says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in all the time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So now you cannot say that what I'm giving is way better than what the Bible says because you see mine is from the Holy Ghost. But the one which is in the Bible, it was just some men who said, no, they were moved by the same Holy Spirit you're trying to say. So the Holy Spirit, can he give double things? No, he can't give double scripture. And also the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 22 we can read from verse 18. It tells us this. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So are they trying to add something? Are they trying to say things which are not true? Hmm? Let me show you another way to know a true prophet. A true prophet's teachings will encourage righteous behavior and provide sp uh, spiritual benefit. I'm sure you've seen some prophets who are after, uh, you know, you can live the way you want, but God is going to give you a car. You can do whatever you want, but uh, you know you're going to heaven. God has shown me this about you. He's going to elevate you. Fine, those are good things. But what if the person does not even know God? What if the person is not even a believer? What if a person is not even doing the will of God, is going against the will of God? Do you think the will of man is going to 
go above the will of God. Even Jesus himself, he said, not my will, but your will. When he was here on earth, he wanted to glorify the will of the Father, not his own will. Seeing the point here? So a true prophet's teachings will encourage righteous behavior and will provide scriptural benefit. Now let's read the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter... Um, let me see. Deuteronomy chapter 13. And we can read from verse 1 to verse 4. Okay? I want you to, sh- uh, to, to, to show you this. Uh, if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Are you seeing the point here? Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and you shall serve him and cleave unto him. If somebody comes and tells you, let us do this evil thing, friends, they tell let us let us steal a little bit from the church treasury so that we can you know buy a good car for ourselves as the as the ministers so that you know it's really good as we as we go to that meeting with a nice you know a Range Rover or a private jet from the money of the church which is supposed to be for mission and we say oh let's buy some luxuries for ourselves you, you see God is not really is uh, uh, not mad about this. We can do it. I'm a prophet. You can trust me. Friends, don't do it. Do not do it. You're the treasurer of the church. Don't do it. Stay away from those people who tell you to go against what God wants to be done. God is not after you enriching yourself. He's after you leading others to Christ and evangelizing. If money has been collected in the church for evangelism, don't be used if you're the treasurer or you're, or you're in the church and be lured into allowing that money to be used for personal gain, for filthy lucre, for, for, for whatever filthiness. Because those people, they are saying their own things. That is not the word of God. And also when we look at uh, the book of Jeremiah 23 verse uh, 13 to 14, it says, And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. And I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers. Hmm. You're seeing the point here. So what is happening? These false prophets, they strengthen the evildoers. Those are not true prophets of God. When also we see verse 32 of Jeremiah 23, it says, Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, says the Lord, and, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I send them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit these people at all, says the Lord. When you follow such people, you will never profit in anything. Nothing. When you look at Ezekiel chapter 13, verse uh, uh, 17, uh, verse 17 to, uh, let, me, let me see this, Ezekiel, 13 17 all the way we can read to 23 let me show you right the bible says likewise thou son of man set up thy face against the daughters of thy people which prophesy out of their own heart and prophesy thou against them there are people who are prophesying from their hearts not from what god is saying you just have a feeling and then you go and prophesy which is 
what you're feeling, not what God is saying. And verse 18 says, And say, Thus says the Lord God, Woe unto the women that, that sew pillows to all armholes and make uh, kerchiefs upon the head of every statue to hunt souls. Will you hunt the souls of my people? And will you save the souls alive that come unto you? And, I, and will you pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread? To slay the souls that should not die and to save the souls that should not live by your lying to my people and hear your lies? Wherefore, says the Lord God, behold, I am against your pillows wherewith you there hunt the souls to make them fly and I will tear them from your arms and I will let the souls go even the souls that you hunt to make them fly your kerchiefs also will I tear and deliver my people out of your hand and they shall they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted and you shall know that I am the Lord because with lies you have made the heart of the righteous sad whom I have not made sad and strengthen the hand of the wicked that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Therefore, you shall see no more vanity nor divine divinations for I will deliver my people out of your hand and you shall know that I am the Lord. Look at that. Look at that, friends. That is the word of God saying exactly what he's going to do to these false prophets. And I want you to read you a couple of more verses. Uh, on that, I'll read you two more on the same. The Bible says in uh, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 14, uh, from verse 4 to 8, it says, Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that sitteth uh, setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet. I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his ad- idols, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart because they are all estranged from me through their idols. They are strangers. Friends, you can be a stranger to God because of your idols. He doesn't even recognize you anymore. It's like, okay, let it be. Therefore says unto the uh, therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, repent and turn yourselves from your idols, and turn away your faces from all abominations. For everyone of the house of Israel, or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separated himself from me and setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself, and I will set my face against that man, and I will make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off from the midst of my people, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Hmm. Is is anyone going to bear that? Lamentation 2 verse 14 Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee and they have not discovered thine iniquity to turn away thy, uh, thy captivity but have seen for thee false burdens and causes of banishment. Friends, if this one doesn't give you a turnaround concerning false prophets, then I don't know what will. Let me tell you again how you can notice a true prophet. Right? Now, a true prophet, his life will reflect a divine call. His life will uh, reflect a divine call. Now, how can you say your call of God and you live like the devil? How can you say you're a Christian, a man of God, but you don't portray that. You live a very different life. So you're a false prophet. You're full of scandals. You're full of issues. How can you claim? Because the Bible tells us very well, let anyone that names the name of God 
depart from iniquity. Are you still in your iniquity and you're claiming to be a prophet? You're still lying? You're still doing wrong things? You're still stealing? You're doing whatever? I'm not saying that uh, you should be 100% perfect, but your life should reflect the image of Christ. Think about the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 28, verse 7. It says about these people who don't even bear the character of God, and yet they claim to be prophets the bible says but they have also erred through wine and through strong drink are out of the way the priest and the prophets have erred through strong drink they are swallowed up of wine they are out of the way through strong drink they err in vision they stumble in judgment are you like that you make wrong decisions because you're already a drunk then you're not a true prophet. Jeremiah 23, verse uh, 10 to 11. It says the following, For the land is full of adulterers, for because of swearing the land moaneth, the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their cause is evil, and their force is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yeah, in my house I have found their wickedness, says the Lord. They swear things. They do evil things and their force is not right. They are profane. They are full of wickedness. These are not true prophets. Those are not true prophets. Let's also see Jeremiah 23 verse 14. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. This kind of prophets. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers. Hmm? Instead of doing what is right, they strengthen the hands of the evildoers. That none does return from his wickedness. They don't want people to turn away from wickedness. They strengthen the wicked doers. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. These prophets, when God looks at them, they look like Sodom. And the people listening to them, they look like Gomorrah. They don't please God in any way. Jeremiah 29 verse 9 For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. I have not sent them. They send themselves. There are people, so many people in this world today who are claiming to be prophets, who send themselves. Because you can know them by their fruits. The book of Zephaniah 3 verse 4 says, Her prophets are light and treacherous persons. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. They are violating the law of God. They are going against what God is saying. And then they want you to follow them into their wickedness. Like I read to you, and I will read it again in Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. This is what God said. Jesus himself, God said, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth good uh, fruit but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. But every tree that bringeth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits, by their fruits, you shall know them. Don't be lied by these people on how much they wear expensive suits and they look all expensive with private jets. And I'm not saying anyone with a private jet is a liar. I'm not saying anyone with a good suit is a liar. But the Bible says, 
by their fruits you shall know them you can't just be like the way i see in africa most of the time you see a church is led by prophet a b c d who is a extremely wealthy and he cannot even help even two members of his church every day is about collecting 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 money for his own personal gain and he cannot help even an old widow who is there who has no food has nothing they are walking with protocols and bodyguards and all those those are bunch of hypocrites liars those are people to stay away from you should not respect them that's what the bible says those people and every day they are giving different prophecies oh god will do this it doesn't happen you go to their church to hear prophecies for them to prophesy something to your life and it doesn't happen you're still in your troubles still in your problems and they tell you the reason you did not get that miracle which i prophesied is because you did not have enough faith it's not about faith it's because they are a bunch of hypocrites and liars stay away from those people they are liars they are not true prophets and finally another way to understand a true prophet is that a true prophet will acknowledge Jesus Christ as divine he will acknowledge Jesus Christ as divine many prophets false prophets they don't acknowledge Jesus they acknowledge themselves they acknowledge other things they say when you touch this it will work put your faith in this handkerchief put your faith in this a uh, uh, water put your faith in this a uh, uh, words that I'm speaking to you put your faith whenever you face a problem come and i will sort all your problems they don't see jesus they see themselves and they see the instruments that they are using to con people those are false prophets a true prophet will acknowledge jesus christ as divine and i want to read to you what the bible says in the book of first john chapter 4 from verse 1 to 6 it says beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they be they be of god because many false prophets are gone out into the world hereby know ye the spirit of god every spirit that confesses that jesus christ is come in the flesh is of god and every spirit that confesses not that jesus christ is come in the flesh is not of god and this is that spirit of the antichrist whereof you have heard that it should come and even now is already in the world you are of god little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than the one that is in the world they are of the world therefore they speak of the world and the world hears them we are of god he that knoweth god he has us he that is not of god he has us not hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error friends when you see most of these false prophets they are aligning themselves with the world the world loves them so much they say they are prophets of god but they are always 24/7 you know aligning themselves with the ideas of the world is not bad to be with sinners because you should be the light to them and the salt to them but uh, if you're aligning yourself with the principles with the ideas of the world then you are of the world you cannot claim that you're Christ like and you're living and uh, copying the world that's not true christianity that not being in the image of Christ always ask yourself in every situation in everything that you do what would Jesus do how would Jesus react on this how would Jesus respond to this and that's how you'll know that you're walking in the ways of light and that's how you will know this person is a true prophet is a true person of God when he aligns himself with the scripture and doesn't align himself 
with the things of the world. And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you didn't learn something. And remember, you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And please don't forget to favorite our podcasts and subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new Bible study question. If you'd like to get saved or you need a step-by-step Bible verses on the order of salvation so that you can well preach to your friends or family, or maybe you just feel led to support our ministry or buy some cool Christian merchandise, kindly visit our website, keithmuoki.com for more details and breakdown. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon in the next one. Thank you.